So previously I showed you a number theoretic example for applying the pigeonhole principle. I thought I would show you something of the similar vein, but it's actually it's a little bit simpler of a claim. It's well, actually it's much simpler. However, the way you identify the objects in the bins, it isn't quite as clear how you do that. So I thought I would show you an example, and I'm going to call it Lucky 7. Because I'm feeling lucky. So suppose we are given a set of numbers. A set of numbers, and it's going to be this set. A is going to be equal to the following. It's going to have elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to have these elements in it. So I have a question for you. Can we pick, can we pick four of the numbers? Four of the numbers uh yeah let's go four four of the numbers in a such that such that two of the numbers add to exactly seven So imagine this is like you're you're sitting there being a uh, being a game game show designer. Maybe you're playing making some game, and you have this set of numbers, and you would like to be able to have it so that if somebody picks four of the numbers, I'm thinking of something like The Price Is Right or something like that, and you want to set up a game so that uh, you can maybe rig it against the player. I'm not quite sure, but anyways. The point is, is that suppose I give you that set A. I want to know if you can pick f if there's if 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 uh, if you pick f any four of the numbers. So is there? So if I pick any four of the numbers from A, can I guarantee that that two of the numbers add exactly to seven? So this is a pretty interesting statement because it's talking about adding numbers. Two, it's talking about any four of the numbers in A, right? It isn't just all of them, right? It's any four of the numbers. So I thought I would show you something akin to this, so that way you get a flavor for how you might identify the objects in the bins, because here it's not quite as clear what you would do. Because remember, the first thing is that it isn't the whole set A that we're playing around with anymore. Now the statement is about if we pick four of the numbers in A. So it could be any four of them. So I want us to think about how we could we could characterize this. So I have an idea. How can we add the seven? <laughs> so so how can we add the seven? In particular, using two numbers. So there's something neat about this set. So it's something special about that set over there. Let me show you. So how can we add to exactly 7? Well, you could do 1 plus 6, right? That equals 7. Uh, you got uh, 2 plus 5, right? That's equals the 7. You also have 3 plus 4. That equals 7, right? So something nice about this is that there do exist ways that you can pick the pair such that they add to 7. But there's something very special about the way that these possibilities look. Because these are all the possible ways that I could add to 7. Now, keep in mind, I'm not counting the ways that you could swap these, but the point is stands. Is there something very special about this? Is that the list of ways I can add to it, they form pairs, right? They're pairs of numbers that you could pick. But they're not just that. They're not just that. Notice that if I actually look at all of these elements, they appear exactly once in here. 
Do you see that? So I have a suggestion for how we're going to set up the objects in bins. So the objects are any four numbers of A, so you could give these names if you like, you could call them like A1, A2, A3, and A4. How about the bins? Now that's the part that's a little bit of a head scratcher here. Now, what does it mean? <laughs> What does it mean for it to be that two of the numbers add to exactly seven? That means that if I give you, so I pick four numbers out of A. That means that two of them have to sum to seven, right? So, so you gotta, you gotta look at it a little bit different than we've done previously. Previously, we always had it where, oh, this has a property with this thing. And it's just really direct like that. Really simple. Now, keep in mind, it is still the case like that here. It's just a little bit more subtle. So the bins are going to be the three subsets. One, six. Two, five. And three, four. These three subsets have a special property that they do what we call in set theory, they partition the set A. Meaning that if you take all of these, you put them all together, you get A. But also note that every single one of them, they have no common elements amongst each other. So this is, this is kind of neat because now that means that regardless of which numbers you pick, one of them is going to sit in one of these buckets. That's why we need that. That's why this is a really neat property here. At least for example, this is why we need it. So let me just kind of draw a picture for you. Just to kind of lay this all out for you. So I have four numbers. Say A1, A2, A3, A4. These are my numbers chosen. These are the objects. And then I'm going to have my partition of A. There's three subsets. Those correspond to my three possible ways I can add to exactly seven using two elements. And here's the catch. Now, I'm hoping that this will connect all the dots for you. Is now, the relationship that we had was, as I said, each one of these numbers will be in one of these, right? So a very simple way of associating each object with a bin. So this is the, the partition of A. Each pair adds to seven. These are our bins. So we could define a relationship like this. S of AI is this is going to be corresponding to the subset number ai belongs to so it means that when you pick a number like you pick the four numbers each one of these sits in one of these it has to remember these three subsets partition a so it has to be in one of them and we're saying each one of these gets picked I want to know if two of them add to seven. But now look at this. I have four numbers. I have three subsets. What can you guarantee is going to happen? There's going to be at least one of the subsets where these numbers are going to appear. But there's going to be two of them. And those are your two numbers as I had in my question, right? <laughs> So the way we're using the pigeonhole principle is a little different here. What we're doing is we're pick by by pick we're allowing us to see if these two numbers uh, add to exactly seven. What we're doing is we're guaranteeing that each one of those sits in one of these, 
And since each one of them adds to a seven, when I add the numbers in these, when I apply the pigeonhole principle, what it actually does is it's telling me for sure that two of them, at least, meaning it, when I pick two of them, they're going to add to seven. And keep in mind that because of the way I have to pick the numbers, they have to. It has to be two, okay? So let's, uh, let's put this all together now. So yes. By the pigeonhole principle, at at least two, at least two numbers. In fact, if they're all distinct, then, but anyways, let's 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 keep going here. At two, at least two numbers. At least two numbers from the four occur in one of the three subsets. Now, I have a question for you. If I were to change this question a little bit, instead of it being four, how about three? Can we use the pigeonhole principle like we did here? No, no, we can't, we can't do that, no. Why? Because for example, it's possible for me to pick, say, uh, one, two, and three. Those are three numbers I could potentially pick, right? Out of the three numbers. Notice that regardless of which way you pair them, none of them add to seven. Do you see that? So, is that a, so this is one way we can use the pigeonhole principle when we want to characterize sums. The whole trick here is to notice that we have partitioned the set such that when we have all of the elements here, these are all the possible ways we can add to seven. And these numbers have to occur in some, one of these subsets, exactly one of them. So very careful application of the pigeonhole principle here, but a kind of cute one too, at least for additive properties.